the Diablo 4 launch is coming soon and you might be wondering what are some things that I need to avoid doing or some mistakes that are easy to make and don't worry I've got you covered. But a first little caveat is that this is really if you want to be efficient, if you just want to enjoy the game and have fun, you really should just enjoy the game, have fun. Probably don't look up any guides, don't do anything like that, play the difficulty you want to play, all that stuff. Just have fun and enjoy the game. This is preseason, so it's not even like the season thing going on. There's no leaderboards or anything. It's just all fun. So if you don't really want to push hard and like, rush to end game you don't have to do that that said some people do like being efficient and so here are my tips for you number one uh playing on world tier one while you're going through the campaign i have a whole video about this I recommend checking that out and uh i'm not going to go into the arguments too much but basically there is no loot bonus for killing stuff in world tier two but stuff is definitely more difficult which means it's much less likely that you're going to be one shotting the entire game, especially as the, you know, the things level up, the whole world levels up with you. So the more powerful you become, well, the more powerful everything else becomes. And so you go from one shotting everything to two shotting to taking several hits and uh, world tier one. So it's going to be faster in that regard it means you're always going to be getting more loot. So if you're playing in world tier two, you're basically playing with less loot all the time. The number two thing is a kind of a build problem that I see a lot of people doing. And this is you want to make sure that whatever your core skill is, and this could be a core skill or it could be just whatever you're doing the most damage with, that skill you want to level up to level five when you're going through your passives. So if I'm playing Barbarian here, I might go Lunging Strike and then go into Rend and uh, I might just like put four points in here. Now at this point, I've unlocked the defensive tree and I might go pick up rallying cry but just because this part of the tree is like not as deep as this part doesn't mean that this is a bad part of the tree I want to finish getting all of these points into rend because this is where most of my damage is going to be coming from rallying cry is nice because this helps me generate more resources helps me move quicker and this like empowers rend but it's not doing more damage for me if i pick up challenging shout i'm not doing more damage if i pick up all these other skills i'm not doing more damage you want to make sure whatever your main skill is is leveled up as high as you can possibly get it and yeah there's no benefit to leaving it at four out of five getting plus rank to skills will just push this higher than five in fact according to the devs the highest rank that you can get a skill is 18 with all the different things that you can get on gear. So uh, yeah, just push it up to five. You're getting more damage on the base of your skill. Very important. The next one is put it, you wanna make sure that when you're leveling up that you're not putting legendary powers on your weapons. Now there's one exception for this. If you're a barbarian or a rogue, you can kind of get away with this a little bit, but generally how the power curve in this game works is as you are leveling up, you get all your skill points into your main skill, and then slowly but surely you're on a ramp downwards. And the thing that kind of counters out this ramp downwards is getting a new weapon, but that always ramps back down as mobs level up. So you wanna keep replacing your weapon as you go. And so when you, if you have a like 400 item level weapon and you find one that's 500 item level, Obviously, it's going to be a big damage increase. You want to upgrade that. Uh, if you have the legendary power that's like your core, like I need this for my build to function on your weapon, then it's going to become very difficult to replace that, even if it's coming from the Codex of Power, because there is a cost associated with putting stuff on your weapons. So we can see here in the recipes that imbuing a legendary weapon costs two veiled crystals and then 50 times the item power of the item gold. And this is just like if you're imbuing something off of a drop. However, if you go here, we can see COP, which I think is Codex of Power. We can see imbuing legendary weapon suddenly costs Baleful Fragment, which is something that you salvage from legendary weapons. So it's way more unlikely that you will be able to apply lots of legendary powers to all of our weapons 
Now, if you're a barbarian or a rogue, you have weapons that you probably aren't using for your build. So barbarians, if you're doing like a rend build, you're not using your two-handed bludgeoning weapon. You can safely slap a legendary power on there and just use it as a stat stick for a long time. And same thing with rogues. If you're playing melee, you can just slap legendary power on your bow. But if you're not doing that, I'd highly recommend putting any sort of offensive power either on your amulet or gloves. And especially if you're going to use any sort of resource uh, affix on your rings, leave those open for that. And so you want to always leave your weapon open to upgrade because it's just going to give you the most power. Even if you have like a really great power, like the splintering aspect for Necromancers, the Bone Spear, I don't think that you put this on your weapon either. It would just be holding you back from replacing your weapon all the time. So yeah, definitely do, do that. And then uh, the next one I would recommend is don't rely on any legendary power that's not on the codex. And so if you're here on the Lotharic site, I'll put this in the description below, or any of the sites, it says location, dry steps. This means that this is on the codex and you can go and run a dungeon and have this power guaranteed to be able to just get applied to your items. And that means that you can 100% have this in your build. On the other hand, if you have something like this, the Osseus Gale aspect, you probably don't want to use this anyways, but if you get this, the only way you can get this is as a drop. So you have to get completely lucky to get this. Now there are some really strong drop only powers, for example, like for the Bone Spear build, if you can go and get Aspect of Exposed Flesh, this is amazing for Bone Spear, absolutely cracked will probably be something you just take all the way up until you can replace it with something else. That's exactly the same, but relying on this for your leveling build is probably a very bad idea because you will not be able to guarantee it at all. And legendary drop rates seem pretty low in the server slam. The next thing up is you need to make sure that you're picking up the herbs and other crafting materials as you're running around. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically these little plants here, there's a whole bunch of them on your way to uh, Loreth's house. And so you just go click on them. There's a little drop and it just running near them will pick them up. You need these gallow vine and bite berries and you need a whole bunch of these like right away because you're going to be using them quite a bit. Now, what are you gonna be using these for? Upgrading your healing potion and making elixirs. Upgrading your healing potion is pretty straightforward. At certain level breakpoints, you're gonna be able to upgrade your healing potion. It increases the flat amount of healing you get. It doesn't increase the percentage healing, but the higher level your potion is, the more likely you're gonna live all the time. And we can see right away that the first one doesn't cost any gold. It does cost a little bit of gallo vine, which you'll be able to get, no problem. The second one, you need 20 total herbs. Now you can convert like bite berry into gallo vine, I believe if you need, but this is still quite a bit, especially if you're not picking up anything or doing too many side quests where you do get some herbs occasionally. But then it's really the next step that's kind of scary. And I think that I'm probably personally gonna get stuck on this for a little bit because crushed beast bones are a rare drop from beasts only. And in the server slam, I only managed to get 10 of these across four characters to max level with some additional farming. So that's not really a lot. And these only come from killing beasts and animals and were creatures. And so th there's really not a ton of enemies like that in the game. And so I only got 10 out of four characters. That means I basically got two and a half per character. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to upgrade my potion for a while and probably be stuck at that point, which is, you know, unfortunate for sure, because the power you get from upgrading your potion is a pretty big deal. So I'd highly recommend you picking up these herbs so you can upgrade your potion. But on top of that, you want to be crafting elixirs because elixirs are going to give you 5% increased experience as you're running around and doing everything. So this is basically a nice little bump that is practically free. 
as long as you're picking these up. And you want to be crafting the Iron Barb Elixir basically the entire time because these are the cheapest and they all give you the same experience bonus. Now some of these give you like dodge or resistance to particular things. Maybe if you're going into like a cold or a lightning dungeon and like you're really struggling, like something in the capstone or something is really wrecking you, you could use one of these resistance potions. But for the most part, I believe that you are just going to want to spam these iron barbs. This is armor and thorns, I believe. And I put all of these information in the Diablo University mega doc. I'll probably gonna do a video about potions as well, but you're kind of like getting the sneak peek right now. Next up is doing activities in the world map before you have your horse. So we have fractured peaks here and I've like taken this map and cut it down to just like main story quest, uh, dungeons and other things. But going around and collecting all of these altars of Lilith, I think is kind of a bait early on. These don't really provide you with large bonuses, like maybe two strength or something, which is like 0.2% more increased damage additive. <laughs> it's not very much damage. Now, getting all of them is something eventually I will 100% do. We'll do the entire tour of Sanctuary, picking up all of the altars of Lilith but this is not something I'm gonna do right away. And I probably will wait until world tier three. Definitely, like I wouldn't do any alter little hunting until I have my horse, which you probably will get either at the end of act two or in act three, because they said something about a quest for Don in his favor. When uh, it's time for you to get the mount, it'll probably just be in your quest log as one of those like important quests like the ones for like upgrading your gear or upgrading gems or upgrading your potion. It'll probably be like obtain your mount or something like that. Just keep your eye out for that all the time, especially after you complete the like act two or act three story. I'd assume that's probably when it's gonna be, might be as far as act four. Uh, hopefully not, like I wanna get into this horse action cause it looks a lot of fun. And also I wanna show off my Ashava trophy. And uh, yeah. That's pretty much my top tips for things to avoid while leveling in Diablo 4. I'm really looking forward to blasting it out with Barbarian. I want to be one of the first Barbarians to level 100. We're pushing really hard with some of my friends. And hope you guys come by the stream and come cheer us on. Or, uh, yeah, see how we're doing. Hope you guys have a good one. Check it out next time. Peace.